YouTube, team keep it clean, what's going on? It's St. Graven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, which is a series where you can ask me any question you want and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be a part of it, because I know a lot of people, ask, how can I be a part of it? But they don't listen to the first 20 seconds of the video. If you want to be a part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. Shout out to all of our Team Keep It Clean patrons for the patrons. And we appreciate y'all that much more but for the patrons. You can send it directly on Patreon. Team Keep It Clean, we have a lot of questions to get into. A lot. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Team Keep It Clean as they take you on this wild ride. Sometimes it can have your imagination going to these crazy places. But we love it, and we appreciate it, and we have a lot of fun with it. So I love y'all. Let's do it. First question came from Ross Deshine. He said, I appreciate you being a patron, by the way. And please correct me on the pronunciation of your name because I know I messed it up. Uh, but he said, when will Wink learn he needs to give the cover zero a rest, especially when you have Peter Smith and Anthony Averett out? Um, it's just one of those things. I know with Wink, he can be very stubborn. Um, and he's not one of those guys, oh man, it, well, if it ain't working, then I guess I gotta change it. No, he's like, hey, if it ain't working, we're gonna make this thing work. We're gonna make it happen. Now, again, I'm, I'm not saying, oh, don't blitz. Don't ever use a cover zero blitz. Don't ever send everybody. Don't ever send the house. Not saying that, but situationally, the, the adjustments, they have to get and be better. They have to. Or else this depleted Ravens team, they ain't gonna be going too far. Especially when it comes to playoff time. And I mean, they, they got to get there in the first place, which I expect them to. But still, you can't take that for granted. You can't take it for granted. So they got to get there first. And if they keep doing the silly stuff, ooh, hey, they, they better tighten up. That's my point. And uh, his other question was, do you think the Ravens will create some packages to get Tyler Huntley on the field? No. They haven't done it by now. I don't think they'll do it. I know they did it with RG3 back in 2019. But, no, I don't see them doing that at all. I wouldn't anticipate it. Next question came from my boy John. Shout out to you for being a patron as well. He said, I just want to start off by saying shout out to Hot Rod Huntley for an amazing comeback. But I think the solution to our defense is hiring one or two defensive coaches that can influence Wink to change just a little bit. Uh, like a Keith Williams and T. Martin role. Ever since they got hired, Greg Roman has adjusted and has been calling plays a lot better than last year. For the most part, yeah, things have been better uh, with the offense. They, they still got some work to do on that side of the ball, too, now. Hey, second half of the season, it's time to turn that thing up. Anyway, um, not perfect by any stretch, but way better than last year. Also, shout out to Giro for the play calling in that last drive against the Bears. By the way, I would really love to see the Ravens hire Rex Ryan. What do you think? Hashtag keep, keep it clean. I, I don't see Rex Ryan happen. I know they got his brother on staff right now, and um, I just don't see him working for hardball ever. He was under Harbaugh for, I think, what, one year? And he, yeah, he was ready to go. He was ready to go. Because he, and I think he worked that year begrudgingly, because he wanted that team. He wanted to be the head coach. He didn't just want to still be a defense coach. No, and he felt like, hey, I should, I should have got that interview. I should have been the one. I've been here. Not this Harbaugh guy. So I, I do not think, see a scenario where he would, coach under Harbaugh. Maybe his brother, he could hit up his brother, but Rob, how, how is it working for Harbs? How is it, man? I mean, I worked for him before as a defensive coordinator. You a linebacker coach, but how is he now? Because back then, uh, how is he now, though? Uh, but, I, yeah, I, I still don't see it happening. But as far as with Wink, hiring some defensive guys, like, what, are you going to hire a different defensive backs coach? With Wink, is I don't know, man, because with Giro, yeah, his struggle was play calling with the um, – with the passing plays, he was a strong run guy, but passing plays that's where he struggled. But, um, so they, they, yeah, TT and Kiki came through. But with Wink, he's a uh, it's the situational stuff. So, yeah, uh, what high defensive backs coach or what? What, what kind of a what a defensive uh coordinator assistant? I, I don't know what the solution to that would be. Next question came from my boy Jerome. He said, why isn't John Harbaugh, and shout out to you being a patron, by the way. He said, why isn't John Harbaugh being seriously considered for coach of the year? With all the injuries this team has and started the season with, it competes every week. Uh, it will accept that Bengals game. But most weeks they, they compete They're right there in the thick of things. Well, they competed for a while in that game. Then the second half, everything just, yeah. 
And in the Dolphins game, it, uh, it's the, well, it was a close game for a good part. Even though it, it, it felt like the game was a lot further apart than it. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> He said, uh, yeah, with all the injuries this team has has started with uh, and they have right now, it competes every week and is leading the AFC North. When you compare what this team is doing compared to the other head coaches being considered, I'd argue Hobbs deserves more consideration. Oh, I'm sure he's been getting a lot of consideration. I know at least from a lot of fans. I, I don't know as far as national media what he's been getting and what he hasn't been getting. Um, but, yeah, you look at this team, and uh, despite you see them just punching themselves in the in the gut, uh, with, whether decision-making, whether it be execution, whether it be bad coaching calls, whether it be this, that, and the other, uh, the fact that they sit in 7-3 and three is crazy. It's crazy. And we love it. That's why these Ravens, they, they stress us out, but we have so much fun with them stressing us out. Um, so hopefully they continue to do well. And they just get a little better here and there. They fine-tune some things here and there. And they fix some things here and there. And uh, they should be in for a uh, fun rest of the season. Next question came from my boy Brandon M. Shout-out to my guy Brandon. He actually went to that uh, Chicago Bears game. So, shout-out to you. Uh, he said, hey, Engraver, my question is about the offensive line. A lot of people have been crucifying Villanueva. Although I think the criticisms are certainly warranted, there's another glaring problem no one is talking about. The center. I was at the game, and I couldn't help but notice that the snaps were always inaccurate. Snaps were flying at Huntley's knees, far right, and had some high snaps, too. Should we be focusing on a new center towards the draft? And with Bradley Bozeman, oh, man, um, that has been something that's been going on for a couple of weeks now. And I know one of my guys brought it up to me on Twitter a couple of weeks ago. He said that he's been seeing it even before the Dolphins game. And I was like, oh, man, I hadn't even really noticed it like that. Certainly noticed it in the Dolphins game, um, but that they they got to fix that quick. Harbaugh talked about it today. Somebody brought it up at the presser about the uh, the snaps going all over the place, and Harbaugh was like, "Hey, well, he's been snapping pretty good this year, but we got a lot of snaps to go, and we certainly do." Um, so Bradley Bozeman, he he, he got to tighten up on that, and we we can't have what happened last year with the snaps going here, there, and everywhere. We can't can't have that happen. Because that's a recipe for disaster. So they got to get that fixed quick. Now, as far as um, one thing that they could do, they won't. But one thing that they could do, um, if things had gotten that bad. Because with their left guard situation, I still feel like they don't even have that figured out all the way. Um, but you could. Uh, they they probably not going to do it. But they could actually put Tristan Colon Castillo at center. Move Bozeman back over to left guard. Um, and, and then, yeah, still via, via Nueva at left tackle, but they're not going to bench him. Um, Tyree Phillips will still be at right tackle, and Zeitler will be at right guard. So you could try that. I mean, oh, yeah, they got Makari back, though, too. Mm. So you, you right now you got some different little options that you could try as far as the offensive line. You got some little ways you can mix it up and whatnot. But um, they, uh, I, I, I don't anticipate them really doing that right now. So, but we'll see. We'll see. You never know with these Ravens. Yeah, and you really never know with these Ravens. Next question came from Shantae. He said, hey, Graven, hope everything is good with you and the fam. Got a question for you. I know the offensive line has been a big yikes this year. Oh, it certainly has. Uh, but I was thinking about something, and I was hoping to get your opinion on it. It seems the majority of the bad plays are to the left side of the offensive line that has had the most trouble. Even though the right side is not that great as well, I just think that they do a better job for the most part. Maybe it's me who just thinks like that. I don't know. But what do you think the Ravens can do to get Alejandro some help with with Miles Garrett coming to Baltimore. Tell me what you think and have a nice day. Wow, timing is everything because we literally was just, just talking about that uh, in the previous question. So the same thing that I was just saying. I don't anticipate them doing that, but if they did something where they there was just that shift, that shift at left guard, and you could you could try Patrick McCarry there at left guard, but I I would rather that, that first suggestion, especially with the snaps going all crazy. Next question came from my guy Bashiri. He said, with Patrick Queen excelling with the switch to weak side linebacker and Bynes on the upside of his career, I think you mean on the downside. Uh, do you think the Ravens will draft a Mike linebacker in the upcoming draft? That is such a good question. Um, that's a great question. Uh, I don't know. That's, oh, that's tricky because you got Malik Harrison too. You could see how that could go. Um, because that, that would take a lot of humility on Ravens' part, though, to try Malik Harrison there. Because we know Patrick Queen, that's your first-round draft pick. That's your guy. And he, he would be expected to be that Mike linebacker. Uh, he wouldn't ex be expected to be the Robin to the Batman. He's supposed to be the Batman to the Robin. 
Um, but they could try Malik Harrison, and if not, yeah, we know Josh Bynes. Yeah, he definitely he ain't gonna be around forever, so he can't he can't keep saving you. So you gotta have a, a contingency plan, but I'm sure they will. Uh, whether it be through the draft, which I don't anticipate, I would think it will probably be through uh, something like free agency, uh, because the Ravens they uh, are are very much in win now mode. They still will be in win now mode next year, even though it's gonna be a lot of uh, changes, a whole lot of changes. Um, but I, I think they they definitely gonna have to address it, because again, Josh Bynes he can't keep being your hero. Next question came from Nakia. Say, hey, how's it going, man? I've been watching for a while. Love what you're doing. Keep it up, bro. Appreciate that. Uh, we really need to do something about the defense. Maybe switch up some stuff. Maybe simplify something so that that way we're not giving up big plays every game. I agree. We ain't even got to keep con continuing. I, I agree already. Uh, it said, I've been blessed to experience both sides of it, coaching-wise and player-wise. It's simple. It's only two things that come to mind uh, to me, execution and effort. If you simplify something, I feel players will execute better. Sometimes it seems like someone is lost out there. Oh, sometimes. <laughs> A lot of times. So I agree 1,000%. The tackling is all effort. The players have to give more effort. That's something that you can't coach is effort. And another thing, uh, I know I'm reaching here. Just want to get your opinion. I know he's been hurt and had some off-field trouble, but how do you think Ruben Foster would do in this defensive scheme? Have a blessed day. I think he would be doing the same thing as everybody else if, if he was all confused and stuff. Um, but if it was simplified, like I, 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 I agree 1,000% that is, if, if they allow people to get great at something instead of trying to have guys be good at this and that, 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 that I feel like things could be better and be smoother. But that's just that's not the way that they operate with the defense. Um, and the defense has been successful overall over the years and stuff. And I know a lot of people, hey, well, you guys complain about Wink, but look, his defenses have been like number one and number two and all, all these high ranks or whatever they have been. But, and that's cool. We appreciated that so much. But this year, they're not that. And this year is not about last year. It's not about the year before. It's about this year. So you have to adjust this year. You don't have the same players this year. You got all these injuries this year. Pookie just keep on messing with the mic this year move but anyway <laughs> goodness she i think she just she thinks she's a small dog and she's not she just walk around here like she's a yorkie or something and she's like a giant cow in here right now but anyway um you you have to adjust to your situation and that's simply what wink and the ravens have to do simplify Next question came from my guy Elijah. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Last time I had emailed you, I had us going eight and two. Well, we're seven and three in our first ten, and the roughest part of our schedule is here. It sure is. Uh, I got a, I got us going undefeated. <laughs> hey, I hope you're right. That would be great. So we wouldn't be able to lose another game for the rest of the season, or else it'd be over. Uh, but anyway, in the month of December and winning on Sunday night against the Browns, I, I'm still Team Harbaugh because I'm scared of riding that coach carousel." And wasting Lamar Jackson's best years, which leads me to my two-part question. I understand needing to move on from coordinators, but do you really think it's wise for us to move forward replacing Petty Harbaugh? Um, uh, okay, that's the first question. Well, the thing is, um, no, I, I don't like the whole coaching carousel either, but why does the coaching carousel continue to happen? Um, I, I think that with the Ravens, if, if they're not going to move on from Harbaugh, which nobody expects them to, um, they they need to allow somebody else, maybe EDC or somebody, to pick the coordinators and not have Harbaugh hire his buddies. That's been the problem because when you, if you're hiring your buddies, you the, the only people you're hiring is your friends, and you understand you. Oh yeah, this is a good person. You got a good heart, and that's cool. That's great. But if you only hiring your buddies, that keeps you in a comfort zone, and that has you in a comfort zone with them. And when things get rough, you're like, oh, this this is my buddy, like. He, 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 he couldn't even fire Marty Morningweg straight up. They had to make up some position for him to do some fake declining of the offer, of the opportunity, so he wouldn't, it wouldn't show that he got fired. Dean Pease, he had to retire. So that, that's been the problem. It's the, the, the problem is that with, with, I feel like with, with Harbaugh, you may give him too much power with these coordinators, with, with the decision of the coordinators. So when, when he has all that power and he has all this, oh, yeah, okay, this is the guy we're going to get. I love that it's a family vibe and a family atmosphere. That's great. I appreciate that so much. But I feel like it can almost hold the team back sometimes. 
Because when it's time to to make the hard calls and when it's time to cut bait, if it's time to move on, then it's time. And sometimes they're like, oh no, no, they they, they cool. That, that that's my friend there. But I just that's that's my two cents on it. And number two, he said is John Harbaugh on the hot seat depending on the results of this year, or is he already on the hot seat? He's not on the hot seat at all. He's not. And for him to even be on the hot seat this year, it no, he's not gonna be on the hot seat this year at all. I I I can't see that at all. I, I just can't see. I feel like John Harbaugh has like he is like super safe. Say, for instance, and I know it's, it's not going to happen. I mean, it's possible because the games haven't been played yet, but I don't expect it to happen. What if Ravens lost every single game for the rest of the year this year? I would still feel like Harbaugh wouldn't even be on the hot seat because I feel like they'd be like, you know what? Oh, man, all, the, all those injuries, they finally ended up catching up to us. They ended up catching up to us. So I, 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 I still do not feel like he'll be on the hot seat, even if that went down. So I feel like Harbaugh is super safe. Anyway, he said, side note, I disagree with Harbaugh doesn't hire those who could threaten his job or threaten to take his job. Anytime, oh, it's like, it's like we're talking right now. <laughs> so, he, yeah, right. <laughs> but anyway, he said, I disagree with Har that Harbaugh doesn't hire those who could threaten to take his job. Anytime we get great coordinators, they get head coaching jobs. Can't be mad. That's the way the game goes. Thanks for the videos and wishing you and your family good health. Hashtag Ravens flock. Appreciate you. Um... Uh, I don't think so. Uh, and and I mean, can you blame him? Who who would hire a coach that could threaten to? Who would hire somebody that could threaten to take their job? Who would do that? Like no nobody would do that. Nobody would do that. Like oh yeah, yeah hey let's bring on this guy. You know what? Hey, he's really qualified. Um, he's qualified for the position that we're gonna offer him. Ah, well he's also qualified for my job too. Um. Yeah, let's bring them on. No, ain't nobody doing that. Why would they? Next question came from Doxy Boy. He said, I ain't graven. I hope you're having a good day. Just wanted to ask one question. Should the Ravens have used Trace McSorley as a utility guy to help them spread the ball around more? It's already a pain to try to stop Lamar Jackson, so why not try to stop Trace McSorley on top of that when he was a Raven? Um, no, he's not built like Taysom Hill at all. I know that question had come up a long time ago, too. Um, but he he's not built like that. His body frame is not like a Taysom. Like Taysom Hill's like, hey. uh, with Trace McSoy, he's like, hey. So no, he um, nah, they couldn't do that. Next question came from my boy Jonathan. He said, hey, my name is Jonathan. I've been a Ravens fan for twelve years. The question I have for you is, being that the Ravens season has seen so many ups and downs, I can't help but wonder if this season reminds me of the two thousand seven New York Giants season, the year they won the Super Bowl. If you look at the two thousand seven season, you can see some similarities. The way every game always seems close into the wire. That being said, what are your thoughts on if the Ravens just might be the two thousand seven version of the Giants? Thanks for all that you do and hope that you and your family is good. Appreciate that, Jonathan. We would love that. I, you, you would. Yeah, I won't complain out of none of us if that happened. All these injuries, all these crazy coaching decisions, all this bad tackling that we've seen, all these blown coverages that we've seen. It, ooh, that would be crazy. That would be crazy, but we would love it. Next question came from Football World. He said, Angry Graven Hope All as well. Curious about what you think. Uh, with our defense. I feel like with the defensive line, it's so lackluster. We aren't good at stopping the run. We aren't good at sacking the quarterback. So what player would you really want to see on the Ravens defensive line? Um, I mean, that they have been overall pretty good at stopping the run. Um, for the most part, uh, they have given up some good, big stuff here and there. But for the most part, they've been handling that. Um, but all the other stuff, like you said, rushing the pass. I, I, feel, like, I feel like it's not even a certain player. Uh, for me, I think it's all scheme. It's all scheme. The, the scheme is not a scheme that is friendly to pass rushers. It's not. Um, and, and it's not just been this year. It's been over the years. It is not friendly to pass rushers uh, because he has them doing so many different things. Uh, so that's that's not going to change. Um, and his other question was, do you think Adafi Away is defensive rookie of the year? Or Micah Parsons. Uh, well, obviously too early to tell. Um, but uh, probably, probably got to give that edge to Micah right now. Got to give that edge to him. Um, just a slight edge. And I ain't like, oh, he's beating a Dafe away down. No, it's, again, scheme. Next question came from my boy Kyle. He said, what's up, Engraven? This is my second time sending an email as I had to delete the other one due to typos. <laughs> my question is, do you, do you think that the Ravens can make it to the Super Bowl by the way this offensive line and team are playing right now? Based off of right now, no. 
But, hey, you never know what could happen. But based off of th that question right there, no. But he said, O-line has given up too many sacks, and Lamar has to run every play just to get a few yards. Our defense can't stop big plays, and we have blown coverage multiple times. If we get down big in the playoffs, the chances of coming back are slimmer as the Raven te as the teams get tougher. Appreciate your time, and hope your family is good. Appreciate it, Kyle. So, yeah, it's like he asked a question, <laughs> but he answered his own question, like, right away. I'm glad we got our answer in there before before we read the whole thing. But, yeah, I, I agree. It it, yeah, they can't do it with the way the, the way the team is playing right now. No, but can it be done? Yeah, but the way they are right now, no. Next question had come from T-Dog, and this was, must have been before Kenji came back. He said, Angraven, hope you and the fam are doing well. With the Ravens uh, losing trace to the Cardinals, do you think they could end up signing RG3 again? He already knows the system, and he's had a year to rest up and heal. What's your opinion on this? Um, I thought it could be a small possibility, but I, was, I always thought it was going to be Kenji. I did not think it was going to be anybody else but Kenji. This late in the season, and he was with the Ravens recently. RG3, he hadn't even been with a team at all. Um, so I, I always thought it would be Kenji. I didn't really think it would be RG3. Next question came from my boy Kevin G. He said, hey, fam, how's it going? Hope all is well. Now, in case you haven't seen it, but I sent you a link about New York Giants letting their offensive coordinator go for the same thing our, our offensive coordinators are not doing. We just been sliding by. This is what we've been saying about our coaching for the past few years, man. And all year this year. Hobbs has to learn when to let go. Hey, we were just talking about that a little early in a previous question. Anyway, um, he said, our guys are not getting put in situation for them to play at their best. <laughs> also, why does our defense look confused on every play? <laughs> Everything that we were just talking about. It's always at least three players looking around like, what to do? We have to communicate more so they know who has who. Sorry for the long statement. It's just something I'm tired of seeing every game. P.S. Watch this part. Listen to this. Let our safeties play safeties, and that will help with over the top to stop the big plays. Peace and blessings to you and yours and everyone out there. KG, you on it. You on it. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. This is simple. This is straightforward. It's straight up. And it's all truth. Next question came from my boy Jeremy. He said, good morning, Engraven. I'm Jeremy. And I sent a previous question uh, in asking you who you thought was to blame regarding constantly snapping the ball as the play call expires, which gives the defense a jump start on blowing up our offense. I thought it was because of G-Roll getting the play call in late. But after watching Huntley yesterday, I have to say it's Lamar. Lamar does not help the offensive line when taking so long to snap the ball. It seems he has some of that flacco nonchalant attitude when it comes to that. What do you think? You think Lamar got a flacco nonchalant attitude? Have you have you ever seen Lamar on the field? Have, have you ever seen when stuff is going bad? Have you ever seen him on the sideline? Have you ever seen him when stuff is going good? He definitely ain't the nonchalant type at all. Does he share the blame when it comes to getting the playoff late? Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. No, no doubt about it. Because him and G Row, that's their thing altogether. That that's their thing for sure. Um, but it's it's Guys got to get lined up. They just there has to be that sense of urgency because again, this has been a problem for so long, so long. It's like Lamar got to get that thing. He got to get it, get it quicker. It got to be a lot quicker. Um, and then they yeah they got to get the play call in quick enough too. But also it's and I'm not trying to take blame off Lamar at all. But if you the coach and you you know like if we see it then coaches like they they gotta see it right I think but if you see this as an issue like if you're it's like for me it reminds me of a of a parent with their kid if you see your kid is doing so, is struggling with something over and over and over and over and over over you look at it you address it and you figure okay how can I stop or help my kid from struggling with this for so long. Because, yeah, it's the kid that's doing it, but this is my responsibility to fix it. So it's the same way, in my eyes' opinion, at least. Um, it's the same way with Giro and Lamar, with the whole coaching staff and Lamar with the, with the play call. Whatever, they, they got to get that fixed. So as coaches, if you're seeing that, that that's happening, it's been happening for years. Even if it's on Lamar Moore, they got to get that fixed. Next question came from a guy, Reese. He said, I think Huntley did a great job, but I think something in the offensive playbook needs to change. A coaching staff needs to change something because they seem to play better under crunch time uh, or the plays they decide to go with get better toward the end of the game. We need to get that kind of game play at the beginning of the game or throughout. What is your opinion? 
I, I think we would all agree. Uh, maybe we, maybe what the Ravens need to do, or what I, I wish these teams would do in their stadiums, just make it put the the, the clock on, put, make it show fourth quarter, and make it show two minutes to go, and, and and also show every time the Ravens offense hits the field, make sure the uh, the opposing team their scoreboard looks like they have more points than the Ravens, even if they don't. Just make it look like like look like it that way, because Ravens in crunch time, like you said, oh yeah, they picking up the pace, they moving. They wheeling and dealing. They making great decisions. They they great great play calling. Not well on offense at least. But so I, I'm with that. So that some gotta give because again, these slow starts where they come out. Oh well, yeah. We'll, we'll try to score some points early on and maybe we will. no. You gotta get that thing moving. And you, it, you ain't gotta go up tempo every single snap, every single drive. You ain't gotta do that. But to pick up the pace a little bit, you could, you could do that. So. They need to get on that like fast. Next question came from Crystal. She said, hey, how are you? How about Adrian Peterson? Will we be able to afford him and have a blessed day? Oh, they could certainly afford him, but no, Adrian Peterson, no. I, mm -mm. I, um, I mean, I actually, he, he would be, he would have been a better fit than a Le'Veon Bell because Adrian Peterson, he ain't back there dancing. He doesn't need, well, I, I haven't even seen him with the Titans. I ain't even look at that much. But he doesn't. He's not one of those running backs that's that's the patient runner. He's not one of those running backs that's gonna sit back there forever and be wait, 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 wait. Okay, offensive line blocking perfectly. All right, I can take off now. No, Adrian Peterson. He's straight, he's straightforward. He's a blunt running back because he's straight to the point. Um, so I uh, he could work with the Ravens. Um, but I just I, I I don't think it happens unless the Ravens like had another crazy injury or something like that. I don't see AP going to the Ravens. What about Tyson, though? Next question came from my boy uh, Nicholas D. He, even though he sent it to the wrong email, you got to send it to the right email. I think the way that the Bears game went, maybe he just, he had a headache or something. And he was like, ah, oh, I just, teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Oh, no, no, no. Let me send it to the wrong one. I said, oh, and, and may, may have forgotten. Anyway. He said, I hope you and the family are doing well. But I noticed in the Dolphins game that they kept blitzing and there was no plan B or C. In other games, I noticed that there were problems on offense and defense, but there were still no changes. The Ravens need to have other plans if something isn't working. Come playoff time because we will get there either way. But come that time, we need to have a plan B or C so that we can fix this problem. What do you think about this? Love the videos and keep up the great work with the channel. Appreciate it. So, sounds like you're talking about lack of adjustments. And that's exactly what you speak of. And this is something, yes, that is a problem. And if it remains a problem, then the Ravens won't have a problem in the playoffs because they'll be out quick, fast, and in a hurry. So adjustments have to be made. And you, you, you already playing a bunch of playoff teams now. You, you, this is you are in the playoffs literally right now. You're in it. Like ain't no messing around. Ain't no time to mess around. Browns twice, Steelers twice, Bengals, Packers, Rams. That's playoff team, so you better tighten up quick. Next question came from my boy Keone. He said, is Harbaugh that great of a coach, or is he just a product of great players and leaders? Oh, man. He said, aloha, engraving. I hope you find yourself well on this day. This can be a hot take. Warning, this is a lengthy one, and I apologize. You don't have to include this in your question from subs if you don't want to. I think we can all agree that Harbaugh is respected and celebrated for what he's done for this franchise. When all is said and done, he's most likely going to be the best head coach in our short Ravens history. How much of it is actually him, though? Think about it. When Harbaugh inherited the team, he had the team that respected and followed Ray Lewis. When people talk about the Ravens, they said it was Ray's team. Under Harbaugh, we definitely improved, but it was never enough. It was not until that 2012 season that we finally were able to get to the promised land. Why was that? It was Ray's last ride, and his team willed themselves to ball out of their minds for their leader. Once Ray was gone, we were just down bad. Uh, terrible losing seasons, heartbreaking ones, and just a rough time all around. With nothing looking good for us after five seasons, Harbaugh was on the brink of termination. Enter superstar Lamar Jackson, who takes the league by storm and erases any doubts or critique about Harbaugh. Lamar is a once-in-a-lifetime type of talent. Never seen this before in the league. With how humble and likable he is, his teammates definitely play for him because they want to win for Lamar. Do you notice the trend, though? Another superstar enters the Ravens team and has crazy success and masks the fact that Harbaugh is subpar at best. I feel, I just feel we've never been able to adapt well or go in with a game plan and execute it to perfection like a Bill Belichick-led team. What are your thoughts? Sorry for the long question. I just wanted to discuss this. This is such a great question, and I absolutely love it. Um, I, 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 I love it. The uh, 
how about his um he timing is everything he came into a great a great situation um having ed reed and ray lewis but you got to give him credit though you got to give him credit reason i say you got to give him credit um because billick brian billick had ed reed and ray lewis and the ravens didn't do it they did they, they, they i mean they obviously they won before but they they hadn't won so they hadn't been winning that's why billick got fired so and, and then Harbaugh also dra they, he drafted Joe Flacco, he drafted Ray Rice, he drafted Tory Smith, uh, and they made a lot of moves. So yeah, Harbaugh he did he had a good he had some some significant players on that squad. He he did for sure, um, but he still had to make some decisions and bring on some guys that were they weren't just anybody's. They were significant players that helped uh, with the team. Okay, Pookie. <laughs> so, but so I um, he's he's still a good coach. He's still a good coach. Um, but I do I do see what you're saying uh, about the, the 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 star players and whatnot. Um, cause yeah, after Ray Lewis and Ed Reed, after after those boys hit it, um, the first year what was it? They went eight and eight. They didn't have a losing season that first year, and they've only had they've only had one losing season. And one thing about Harbaugh, um, again, no no matter how you feel about him. This team, they, they love him, and they do uh, play for him, too. Because even before Lamar, like that 2015 year, when everybody was hurt, like, they, they fought. They, they fought. They went 5-11, and 11, but they fought. They, they were not a – if you look at their record, like, look at the games. Only two games were blowouts. That's it. Every single game was decided by one score besides two games. Once against the, one against the Seahawks and one against the Chiefs. That's it. Every, every single game. And they had every single person on that team injured, going for the year. But every game came right down to the wire. And they swept the Steelers, too. Um, so Harbaugh, yeah, he, he is a good coach. Um, and again, like I said, he did have to put some work in, too, uh, in order to get them there. He did have some help now. But um, I, I, I do see what you're saying about the, the, those significant players that come in and they can mask a lot. And then they can. Uh, but still, he... He still had to put a lot of work in, too. So he's still a good coach. Next question came from my boy, Dre to Don. He said, I ain't great, but I'm fed up. While I'm happy for the win, a great team win and a great win for Snoop, I'm highly disappointed in his offensive play calling. The defense played more or less lights out, minus the big plays against the Bears offense that has been starting to click. But the offensive answers uh, without Lamar were lackluster. Uh, there was no change of pace from any other game this season, and it starts with the play calling. It made no sense that quarters one through three on first and second down, we run the ball and get super blitzed on third and passing situations. Snoop made the most of what we were given, but in my opinion, uh, much wouldn't have been different with Lamar at the helm, uh, plus a few little RPOs. What's your take on this? Sorry for the rant. I hope you and the family are doing well. And even better with another win in the books. I, I like how he ended it with a positive. That's that's what it's about, man. Um, I I don't think it would have been much different uh, with Lamar because it's it's been the same thing. It's the slow starts, uh, poor offensive line, <laughs> running for his life. So it probably would have ended up being the, the the same type of game. A little maybe a little differences here and there, but pretty much overall the same type of game. Next question came from my boy uh, Nick. He said, "Do you feel the Ravens are having a difficult time trying to establish a run game?" Uh, yeah. With that offensive line, they, they can't block nobody. So, yes, for sure. And then you don't even have your running back. So that makes stuff that much harder. So, yes, definitely. Uh, he said it's like they try to they try with their running backs in the first quarter and then they give up. Mm. Uh, they give up everything. Oh, every, everything after that is just Lamar taking off. There's no way I would have guessed that these guys would be topping the league and rushing by just watching the games. I agree. I, I, that's the exact same thing that I was saying, too. When, when you, like, if you look at the stats, yeah, the Ravens are one of the top rushing teams. But if you watch the games, like, it, it seems like there's no way that something like that is possible. And it literally makes no sense. But if they didn't have, it, didn't have Lamar, then they wouldn't be there. Next question came from my guy, Rod's Backyard Barbecue. He said, hey, team, keep it clean. Hope all is well. Question. In the Pittsburgh game, they came up with a tie. How does that work in the win-loss column? Well, it's neither. It's a tie. So it's not even in the win-loss column. It's, it's off to the side. Um, but how does it work with winning divisions, going to the playoffs? Well, it's, it's, it's just all about your record at the end of the year. It's all about your record. Um, so the teams that have more wins, they'll be in better position when it comes to playoff seeding and all that good stuff. That, that's it. It's um, not, just trying not to make it overly complicated. 
it's all about the win-loss and tie record, and, and that will give them it'll give them less losses because they didn't lose a game, but they also didn't win it either. It's sort of like floating in, in this ozone layer, and it's just but it's it's just weird, man. It, it it's it's weird. Uh, he said the Ravens lose to my the Ravens lost to Miami. Uh, it's truthfully one of the losses that we needed. Honestly, I don't like when people say that because I, I I I disagree. Who 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 wants or needs to lose? Um, now uh, you sometimes you got you get you get punched in the mouth. But do you, do you need to lose a game? Oh, you could win and, and fix stuff. You could win and make adjustments. It shouldn't take losses to be like, oh, well, okay, now we see the problem. No, so I, don't, I, don't, I disagree with they needed to lose. But anyway, he said, when we lose bad games back to back, we come out on fire. Uh, even when we had Joe Flacco. So here's my prediction when it comes to the playoffs. If we get to the AFC game this year, we're going all the way because so many other teams, the Ravens, don't know what it feels like to lose at a Super Bowl. <laughs> He said, uh, I'm just fuming, but yeah, the Super Bowl, if we win the AFC Championship game. Well, yeah, they, they would have to. If they win the AFC Championship game, they would be forced to go to the Super Bowl. Um, but he said, with all the narratives this team and Lamar has faced from time to time, Lamar took over as QB if this, and I'm just calling for real, for real. But if the Ravens win two games in the playoffs, they're going all the way. I'm not calling Super Bowl. I'm just saying they're going to the dance. What would they say next about him? Oh, that he can't win a Super Bowl? Team keep it clean? Come on, man. They hate him. Well, yeah, that's old news. They, uh, they, they, they've been on that when it comes to Lamar. But, yeah, if, if they won two games in the playoffs, then, yeah, they would be in the AFC Championship game at least. If they had a bye week and won two games in the playoffs, they would be in the Super Bowl. Um, so, I mean, we'll, we'll see. You never know. You, you never know. I don't expect them to get that bye week. Though. I don't think they get the number one seed. But AFC is literally up in the air. The Titans are not some dominant Titan team or anything like that. No. But no team in the AFC is. So it's possible that they get the number one seed. I don't see it, but it is for real possible. Next question came from my boy Chris G. Um, he said, uh, are we too far into the year to turn it around? Or is it just me that thinks some of these young boys are getting better and that could help us down the stretch uh, when more of our injured guys come back? It's, it's never too late to turn it around. You're 7-3. and three. You're 7-3. and three. Like... And it, so it's not even that you got to turn it around. It's that you just got to fix some stuff, some in-game adjustments. Um, you may need to tinker with the roster a little bit with some little, some depth here and there. Um, but no, you, you, you know, it's not too late because you're literally right there in it. Um, and he said, why are we the only seven-win team acting like we are terrible? Is it because we are spoiled and used to being seeing better? Thank you for everything that you're doing. Graven Big Trust and keep it clean. Love you, bro. Love you too, Chris. Oh, uh, So that that's to us as fans. Uh, it's, it's because... It, it, the spoiled part is true But it's because you, you know this team can do so much better Even with the injuries We, we know they can do better So we, we hope that they do do better That's it Next question came from my boy Brian He said what's up Engraven Hope all is well I got two questions The first one is Do you think Lamar and Hollywood were really sick and hurt Or do you think that was a cover story To give them some extra rest For a Sunday night showdown with Cleveland Um, he, Hey you never know man you know, NFL, they, they be having some sneaky stuff going on, man. So you 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 never know. Never know. So I, I, I don't know, my friend. Uh, but he said, I, I'm glad we squeaked out the win against Chicago without our two most productive players on offense. Uh, my second question is something that nobody is probably thinking about. Two years ago, we signed both Ford and Bynes, and they did a great job. Last year, we drafted Queen and kept Ford, but let, let Bynes walk. This year, Ford is out for the season, and we signed Bynes to play next to Queen. My point is, which veteran linebacker do we keep next year to pair with Queen? Uh, keep doing what you're doing and for your fam and team keep it clean uh have a blessed uh have a blessed day uh and just like how i do fires at work i'm out okay so i'm assuming you're a firefighter then hey keep putting out that heat anyway um i think i think ford is done i, I don't i don't think the ravens will bring him back um we love lj ford great guy shout out to his pops too i know his pops be coming through on the videos um, I, I don't. I don't think that he's gonna end up being back just because of the business. Uh, coming off of ACL, um, they want to obviously give more responsibility to Malik and Patrick Queen, and they wanted to too. Like there was gonna be a shift uh, to Patrick Queen and Malik Harrison as their two inside linebackers lined up next to each other. But um, with uh, with the injury to LJ Ford, because LJ Ford was gonna be LJ Ford and Patrick Queen. Um, that's what it was looking like But then in the preseason They were playing Patrick Queen and Malik Harrison It was like, oh, okay So they already doing this They're already moving forward uh, And then the injury That didn't help anything So I, I just I think they're going A different direction uh, From LJ Ford, unfortunately um, And as far as uh, Josh Bynes 
Um, I think he just if if he doesn't retire, I don't think he gets resigned. Uh, I just think they 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 keep him on speed dial, man. I think if he, if he doesn't retire, because he's one of those guys like it's like, hey man, okay, we we trying, but if this thing ain't working. I think they end up giving him a call again if he doesn't retire. Next question came from my guy Chris Mix. He said, hey, is Chris Mix from the West Wing Cayman Conspiracy? Since everybody is grabbing pitchforks and torches, I'm going to point out a very smart call Wink made at the end of the game. With 14 seconds left, the defense rushed nobody. Everybody dropped back, leaving the Bears' front five standing by themselves. After a couple of seconds, Calais Campbell started rushing in to apply pressure and keep them honest. This forced Dalton to throw to, God, to Godwin, uh, Goodwin in the flats, well short of the 50, as everyone else was blanketed. What was great about this play uh, was that it burned 10 seconds off the clock. Normally, you can get three quick plays off in 14 seconds. If the quarterback is facing a four-man rush, He'll throw it away to get another shot and keep as much time on the clock as possible. But no rush coming at him gave him no reason to throw the ball and it eliminated one of the two possible remaining plays the Bears could have had. Even Tony Romo said as soon as the ball was snapped, the Ravens didn't rush anybody. That's pretty smart. What do you think of that play? So Wink is um, just going to the extreme. He like, all right, look, I'm either blitzing everybody or I'm not blitzing anybody. That's it. It's, it's, it's one or the other. But no, man, it's um, that's just part of situational play calling, man. That that's the thing with situational play calling. That's you, you you just want it to be better. With the pitchforks that you was talking about, it's only because people want the situational play calling to be better. That's a good example of it. And even on the last play, the last play, I think they rushed four. The la the very last play where, where Tyus Bowser got another sack. I think they only rushed four, and then they dropped everybody back. So that's you just you 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 want your coordinators and coaches and stuff to be situationally better, and that was an example where he was. Next question came from my guy BB. He said, "If and when John Harbaugh is replaced as head coach, could you see Kellen Moore being a head coach in Charm City?" Thanks for the channel and for keeping it clean. Hashtag team keep it clean and hashtag positive. So Dallas Cowboys offensive coordinator, former former uh quarterback in the NFL. He made a quick switch from uh, quarterback to offensive coordinator. I think first he started as QB coach, then he got promoted, and so he he been working. So shout out to him. Um, I I don't, anything, I don't though. I, I, I don't. I feel like um, with the Ravens, I feel like if that happened, and we know it wouldn't happen no time soon, but if that happened, um, depending on, and we know Lamar's going to be here for a while, so just depending on if, if and when that happened, um, then I feel like with the Ravens, they, I feel like they wouldn't go to an up-and-coming coach to take over as a head coach. I feel like they would want to go with somebody who's experienced um, because they just, in a lot of times, a lot of positions, they, they, they usually don't go with the young guy. Uh, especially when it comes to a, a decision like I just I couldn't see them doing that. I couldn't see them doing that. Like, for instance, with John Harbaugh, it, like I said, that's why it all depends on the personnel. With John Harbaugh, they didn't have a quarterback. Well, they did, but they didn't. They didn't have their franchise guy. They didn't have the guy. All right, this is gonna be the guy we rock with for the next five, ten years at quarter. They didn't have that. John Harbaugh came in. He drafted Flacco, so he got his franchise guy. They wanted Matt Ryan there, but they couldn't trade up and get him they got Flacco um so with that being said um it's like it, it would all depend on the person that, like if Lamar was here then they could go with a veteran uh head coach guy but if Lamar and a Ravens job like you think the, and it, it all depends on the situation depending on what, what had happened been happening recently with the Ravens but Ravens job could be pretty attractive man. he could be very attractive like, if that job ever opened up, oh, man, people would be sending in applications left and right. But um, if if they had been losing and if they didn't have a Lamar, they if they just didn't know who their quarterback was, then that's that'd be the only way I could see them going with a, a more inexperienced head coach. The last question on this episode of Question for Subs came from my guy Howard. It's funny, I was literally doing the last question and my camera died. So I had to go to the backup. Anyway, the last question. Came from my guy Howard. He said, what's happening in Graven? We've been clamoring all season on how the Ravens need to make proper adjustments within the games as well as adjustments to the game plans. You've posted numerous videos and answered many questions from subscribers on this very topic. I commented on just about all of them as well as sent my text to your email regarding this issue. I hate to use this analogy, but it's like in the court of law. Someone who believes they're innocent still takes a plea bargain for a lesser sentence. By law, that's an admission of guilt. 
The Ravens head coach and, uh, and his coordinators have big egos. That is true. It's, that's very true. Uh, and are stuck in their ways that if they were to make proper adjustments and changes to the system and play calling to them, that would be admitting that their system is flawed and not working. Ooh, 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 ooh. And they refuse to do that. That's why we're in these crazy games, because their style of coaching makes these games harder than what they should be. Just my opinion on the matter. Curious to know your thoughts on my takes and assessments on this issue. Hmm. Hashtag Ravens Nation. Oh, my goodness. This is just fire to end it with. This is lovely and uh, so much truth you spit in here. Yes, they, 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 they do definitely have uh, very large egos um, for sure. No doubt about that. Um, and they uh, it's just been uh, un unfortunate just. Uh, sometimes because again a lot of these games they should not be in these situations and uh, so now that camera died while i was charging this camera in the middle of the question so now we back to this one and i only got a couple of seconds left so anyway yes i agree that egos are huge and yes the, the lack of adjustments I, I love how you put that with the admission of guilt because if they change what they did and they admit it oh, well maybe we shouldn't have done this that would be the admission of guilt so yes, you a thousand percent right about that. And again, we we know what we said earlier. We we know this team can do so many things. We know what they're capable of, but you 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 gotta be willing. It takes a lot of humility to be like, hey, you know what? I was wrong. I should have done better. Hey, you know what? Maybe I should change this. Maybe this is a, a characteristic of my offense or defense. But this is a characteristic that I need to work on, and, and I can actually improve it. Yeah, I've been doing the same thing for the longest, but you know what? I could do something that's even better. I could adjust myself, my way of thinking. Uh, yeah, yeah, but my situation isn't the same as it once was. And yeah, it's still a, a bit of a struggle situation here and there because I'm missing some guys. I'm missing some stuff, but hey, I could still make this happen. But I am willing to change. I sure am. Shout out to Graven.